Hello, my name's Sally Cathcart from The Curious Piano Teachers and welcome to the third video in our Sparkle series. And Sparkle stands for S for Sing, P for Patterns, A for Automatic, R for Rote, K for Knowledge, L for Landmark and E for Enjoy. And today we are looking at A for Automatic and we're going to look at the three different stages of learning. So in this video, we're going to cover the hard work that happens in the first stage, the cognitive stage, and then the blending of activities that happens at stage two, which is the associative stage, and the clearing of headspace when stage three or the autonomous stage is reached. And by the end of the video, you'll be able to map the different learning stages your pupils go through onto a timeline for how they learn notation. So let's start by taking a look at the first stage, which is the cognitive stage. It's always a bit of an eye opener to put yourself in your pupil's shoes, I find. And I don't know how many of you have learnt a foreign language recently or taken up a new hobby or activity. And I'm sure whatever it was, you'll agree that to begin with, it was jolly hard work. And in fact, learning any new skill requires high levels of concentration and attention. I mean, just think about learning to ride a bike or learning to drive. You know, as we go through all the new moves that we have to learn, there's usually a need to talk ourselves through the activity either aloud or in our head. So, for example, if we're learning a new language, then we need to say the individual words or the very short phrases over and over again out loud. So in learning our pupils to develop their notation reading skills, this might equate to naming the landmark notes or describing where they live or even talking through the shapes and the patterns of a phrase and playing the notes on the keyboard. So Mary had a little lamb, for example, on here. We might ask the pupil to describe where the first note lives, that it lives on the first line. Um, we might ask them to, to write the name over the top but then we actually we need to get them to play that note as well. Or we might ask them um, to play the shape or to, to describe the shape of the, the pitch movement, that it goes down by step, down by step, then up by step. And then what happens here? It does the same, the same and the same. Whatever you talk about, though, it has to be related to the sound and the feel via the piano. But it is important, though, that we get our younger pupils at this stage to say it aloud, although this cognitive saying aloud stage is usually really quite a small one. Next comes the associative stage. So let's go back to being on a bike. You've been doing lots and lots of practice and for the first time you're able to pedal in a straight line fast enough and with enough balance to actually stay on, at least for a few seconds. Hooray! So at this stage of the learning process, the initial cognitive effort becomes less as we start to blend together the previous more individual work. And just as before, the more we repeat the activity, the easier it becomes. I mean, it makes sense, doesn't it? And this stage of learning, though, is usually characterised by lots of mistakes and errors. In other words, you're going to fall off your bike lots and lots before you get it to a stage where you can stay on it. 99% of the time. So with our little song here with Mary, the pupil might um, struggle to begin with to play the, the downward pattern or the repeated pattern. But with practice, that gradually becomes a, a more blended activity, as does going over the bar line, let's say. And this finally leads us into the automatic or the autonomous stage. By now, the once new skill has been repeated so many times that it requires no conscious cognitive thought. It's become a bit of a no brainer. And because it doesn't need any input from the brain, it leaves enough space for the brain to be engaged with other probably higher activities, such as shaping the phrase or doing dynamics. And by now, the pupil, if they're reading Mary still, they will no longer be reading it. Instead, the visual, oral and physical sense of it will pretty much all be on automatic. 
And this has just reminded me of, a, a, of one of my young pupils learning his very first off-stave reading pieces. Now, this is a young boy who just sings everything, absolutely everything, no, no matter what the high pitch is. But in the first lesson of doing this new piece, he just didn't have enough space to sing. It took all his concentration to read and play down here. However, the next week he comes in, grins at me, sits down and sings and plays the whole thing to me absolutely perfectly. There had been lots of practice going on that week and he had gone from the cognitive hard work stage through the uh, associative blending stage into that automatic no-brainer stage. To wrap up then, we have covered the hard work that is involved in that first cognitive stage, the blending of skills that happens in the associative stage, and then the clearing of headspace that the automatic stage creates. So now you'll be able to go and at least start mapping the different learning stages that your pupils go through onto some sort of timeline for how they learn notation currently. You'll find there'll be a high degree of overlap. So, for example, their rhythm reading might already be quite automated, whilst their pitch reading might still be at the cognitive stage and developing. That's absolutely fine and as it should be. Well, we've created a workbook to help you to get really clear about all the different principles that I'm introducing in our Sparkle series. So do make sure you go and download that and join me in the next video where I'll be discussing R for rote. I'm Sally Cathcart from the Curious Piano Teachers. Thank you for watching. Happy teaching.